Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. We've got a ton of stuff to get through in today's video, but I want to kick things off with AMD and Samsung. While in the news, headlines such as AMD producing the APUs for Sony as well as Microsoft tend to get a ton of headlines, perhaps one of the bigger deals, which a lot of people are kind of sleeping on, is the news that Samsung will be licensing the RDNA 2 graphics IP from AMD, which of course will mean it will end up in a load of mobile devices. And this graphics IP is not gimped for mobile either. In fact, we will see features like variable rate shading, as well as even ray tracing for these devices. Lisa Sue has actually explained this a little bit. The next place you'll find RDNA 2 will be the high performance mobile phone market. AMD has partnered with industry leader Samsung to accelerate graphics innovation in the mobile market. And we're happy to announce that we will bring custom graphics IP to Samsung's next flagship SOC with ray tracing and variable rate shading capabilities. And we're really looking forward to Samsung providing more details later this year. According to Ice Universe on Twitter, he has leaked that the Samsung uh, AMD GPU was originally scheduled to be released in June, but it has been postponed to July. But of course, we will very quickly learn product details, performance, features, and so on officially. I think this is going to be a very interesting collaboration between the two companies. And again, yes, yeah, Sony and Microsoft are very important, particularly when you think of AAA games, you know, like games like Far Cry, for example, or Watch Dogs or whatever. This means that developers get a familiarity with optimizing on, let's say, the PlayStation and the Xbox, which directly impacts the um, optimization that we can see on Radeon graphics cards. But even so, just in terms of mindshare capitalization, in terms of, well, do re me, the Samsung uh, collaboration is going to be extremely interesting to see what happens with AMD going forward. And also, while I'm on the subject of AMD GPUs, there's also another thing. So Kepler underscore L2, I'll link his Twitter account in the video description, actually DM'd me and he told me about a mysterious AMD GPU known as Cheetah. Now, I want to stress that I believe this information is accurate, but yeah, at the end of the day, you should take it with a pinch of salt. Anyway, he DM'd me to tell me that this GPU was currently in the validation stages. And I can't give a date exactly, but it was several months it entered validation after RDNA 3. So I do believe it is based on the Nave 3X uh, graphics IP. Now, he told me that it's possibly Xbox related, although we quickly ruled that out. And I don't think it's PlayStation related. However, it is almost certainly a custom AMD GPU. So what we're unsure of at the moment is whether it's for a uh, company such as Google or whether it's for a company such as, well, possibly even Samsung. It's also potentially for an AMD APU. Now, the reason I'm putting this out, even though we don't know a ton about it, is because I figure if it's out in the public, there's a possibility someone else knows about this. So, you know, maybe this will kickstart something. It will be an investigation. I've spoken to numerous sources at this point, and I'm almost positive it is not Xbox related and it is not PlayStation related. I can't say how I know that, but I'm going to lean towards that it's unlikely to be one of those two things. So I do think it's either for something like um, Samsung. I'm not saying it is Samsung. I'm just giving an example or one of AMD's own internal projects that we don't know about yet. As after all, AMD's uh, APU roadmap, for example, is actually, <laughs> well, it's really strong. And I actually have some exclusive information that I'm gonna be putting out over the next couple of days. Things have gotten just delayed because, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just say things got delayed coming to my house in terms of desks and stuff for actually like the set and other bits and pieces. So at the moment, it's like half done. I'm not kidding, guys. I literally just threw all of this crap onto the desk like 30 minutes before I felt like, you know what? <laughs> this will have to do for now. Um, but yeah, things are going to get a little bit, you know, more organized recent, um, over the next couple of weeks. But anyway, moving on to the next story. And this concerns Intel's XC. 
And if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've actually been really positive in, well, at the very least, my desire for these products to be good. Because at the end of the day, well, I sound like a broken record, I know, but competition is only ever a good thing. And I think it's fair to say that Intel having their butt kicked by AMD, particularly since like Zen 2 and certainly Zen 3, has really been great for the industry. At the end of the day, if you have one player always on top, and don't get me wrong, I want Intel to kick AMD's butt down the line for much the same reason. However, um, I did say that I believe that the, H, um, the DG2, uh, so that's HPG, so those high performance gaming parts, look to be really good. And I've gone on record and said that I think it might be RTX 3070, possibly RTX 3070 Ti levels of performance. That was according to a couple of sources. Although it was very interesting because the story of Intel XE and DG2 was, well, let's just say touch and go for a while. In fact, a couple of sources at Intel even told me that there was a possibility that it might not come to the market. And there was a lot of, let's say, let's use the word turbulence. Let's use the word turbulence behind the scenes. I don't really want to get into that because when it comes to like, you know, kind of politics inside of a company, you know, kind of like, uh, what's going on behind the scenes in terms of employees and stuff. I try to not get involved in that. The, mo the main reason behind my thinking there is that, you know, in the end of the day, people's personal lives and, you know, what's going on is not necessarily something I want to kind of air uh, on YouTube. But yeah, anyway, getting back to the point. Well-known leaker Tim Apisak has posted performance results for the 448 execution unit DG2 part. But that would mean, of course, the 512 execution unit part would be even higher in performance, which would possibly mean it was in, on track anyway to the performance numbers that we were discussing earlier. The problem is that these numbers seem to be based on some speculation on a couple of message boards, and I don't know how accurate they are. And this is the thing, guys, I'm actually starting to get just a little bit concerned recently with the DG2 performance numbers that I've been hearing, which are more up to date. Now, I don't know which of these results is correct, whether it's 3070 Ti slash 3070 performance or what I'm about to put out. Um, but again, the new numbers are starting to sound a little bit more concerning because I have verified them with a couple of people now and I'm hearing that the performance is actually below the RTX 3060 Ti. In fact, it could even be closer to, I, I guess you could say it would be like a 3065 kind of thing Ti. I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah, I'm hearing that even the highest end parts could be below the RTX 3060 Ti. Not to mention the fact that the die size is supposedly larger than what Nvidia would be putting out. Furthermore, power consumption is also allegedly a little higher than what would be ideal. I don't know about heat. One person told me that the heat is ironically not too bad. However, another told me that it is actually pretty bad. Although you do need to remember that some of this information could be coming from early engineering samples. And let's just be honest, early engineering samples don't necessarily equate to the best quality silicon right? You could have like an early ES and you're lucky if the damn thing actually has a display. So that could actually explain why we're hearing such differences in numbers. But again, I am starting to get just a little bit concerned now with the performance numbers I'm hearing with DG2. And allegedly the drivers are starting to get into a better position. However, the good news is these parts are supposedly quite cheap. Again, I've been hearing two to three hundred US dollars on the absolute top end, which let's assume that these numbers are accurate, you know, 3060 Ti kind of performance, maybe a little, maybe a little better, maybe a little bit lower, but then they release this part under 300 US dollars, but it also has features like Raja Kodori has already shown off, like variable rate shading, hardware-based ray tracing, makes your coffee in the morning, it will also make you scrambled eggs if you like. I'm okay with that, frankly. I don't mind. I think it's not a bad start for Intel to kind of nudge its way into the market. Again, not everyone wants a card which is going to be like, you know, a thousand bucks and is going to run games at 120 you know, million frames a second at like 8 billion pixels. It doesn't necessarily need 
to cater towards those individuals because it's not like AMD, it's not like Nvidia are going to stop stop sorry stop producing products. So I don't necessarily mind if it targets like the low to mid range. I just want to at this point kind of have a better understanding of how AMD and Nvidia will be countering those products because again if you look at cards from Nvidia's current lineup you've got the 3060, 3060 Ti, blah blah blah. From AMD, of course, you've got the 6700 and all of those cards, but we don't really have great competition in the kind of low to mid space from either company. I do understand there's reasons behind that. Silicon shortages are kind of a pain in the ass, and obviously they are starting to fill out the lineup, but, you know, for quite a while now, the best option, I mean, just even if you take the ridiculousness of the shortages out of the equation, let's say they didn't exist and we were looking at the product stack as is you know at some price points you're like well i guess i could pick up a an rx 580 i don't know it's just it's kind of just an interesting time in the market so i don't necessarily mind if the performance numbers are again 3060 ti or slightly below for intel xe the reason i'm covering this quite frankly is because i'm seeing a ton of articles and a ton of like excitement around these performance numbers and again, I'm not saying that they are inaccurate because I, I'm hearing conflicting information myself, but I did want to put this video out just to kind of give you an alternative perspective on this because I think it's really healthy to have like optimism in technology, but I also think it's very important to, you know, kind of hear the opposite side of things. With that said, I'm going to run off now because I still need to do a ton of like work in the background and it makes me sad. I also cut my hand on a nail the other day, so that was fun. I don't think I should do DIY. Anyway, with that said, thanks so much, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.